Hi, I'm Kelly Hushin, editor of the Trade Tech blog, and I'm here with Dr. Christian Zimmer, and we are here at Trade Tech USA in New York City. And uh, I just wanted to sit down with uh, Dr. Zimmer because he's actually going to be speaking at our Trade Tech Brazil event, and uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the issues that you're going to be discussing there, um, and specifically with regards to quantitative trading. So if you could start just by talking a little bit about your background and the firm you're with and that sort of thing, that'd be great. Yeah, of course, no problem. Well, I arrived at the Bank Ito in 2002, still then working in the quantitative group at the asset management firm. Uh, started mainly with options trading, option strategies, uh, then opened up a, a fund, quantitative-based fund, and then later on expanded a bit the product range. Uh, right now we are mostly uh, we, are, we are using a mix of strategies in our fund. Uh, one main focus is to have the fund being mostly 100% optimized. So we, we try to, to get the strategies running purely on models and then optimize trading and go into the market. Okay, great. Now we talked a little bit about uh, the quantitative sort of industry or, or you know the forecast at large, and I wanted to just um, get you to describe it a little bit because it sounds like it's a, it's a bit challenging um, to define quantitative funds in Brazil. Um, so can you talk about that? Just maybe what the size of the market is as you can define it. I know it's tricky because of the way that you define quant funds. Yeah, quant funds in Brazil. Uh, it's not a really separate group where you can say that is a quant fund. Uh, there are funds that we uh, assume they are quant funds because of our interaction with the other asset managers uh, about what we know, what they do, and uh, how they react. But mainly, uh, there's nothing, not, not a pure definition. So you can't say that you, you are a quant fund when you're 100% optimized. That doesn't exist. Are you a quant fund when, when all your strategies are pure quant strategies? No one can really say that and can prove that it's not. Uh, so the funds that we consider that can come into this group might summon up perhaps half a billion of assets under management to realize in Brazil. Um, the structure is that you have perhaps one to three, four, five bigger funds in the range up to more or less 100 million. And the main part of the other funds are small. So they come up from 2 million assets under management up to 20, 30, 40 million at maximum. I mean, the main part, number of funds is a small fund. Mm -hmm. So there you come back to the problem, how you define the fund. Because if you have a one, two man show, it's it's really hard to imagine that you can find out uh, a way to create a lot of quantitative strategies, real quantitative strategies, with good back testing, with strategy testing, with optimization tools that you need, and even optimize your, your approach. Sure. So it's hard for me to believe that the smaller funds can really do like that. It's not a big team of 10, 20, 30 persons that work on that. I was gonna, that's going to be my next question, actually, was how do these quant funds work? It's hard to, to define them, but what characteristics differentiate these kinds of funds? So you can kind of hone in on that a little bit. Yeah, well, it, it's hard to say if, if you really can differentiate them from an objective point of view. Okay. Differentiation is what you can hear from that. So it's a good marketing tool to have a plan fund because the investor assumes that your returns will be not correlated with the other returns, the other funds. But if you really put the, the results to, and compare it to, to the market, you will see that the very high beta of the, of the equity market, so the biggest part of the assets is uh, in, in fixed income, uh, like Brazilian treasury stuff. So there's not really a correlation benefit of investing in these quant funds. And then when it comes for you to say, well, how can I have a quant fund if it's quant fund, when you look at the methodology, that's not so easy either. You can say, okay, well, do you use method lab? Do you use mathematics? Do you use so What do you use to, to create your decision? Uh, that's not really easy for you to define that this one is a quantitative approach. You must be really expert, really in inside of the market, in the method, method, methods to understand if that's a good approach.
Now, just taking a step back and looking at quantitative trading, um, at, you know, as a whole, um, what do you think are some of the benefits and um, the disadvantages of quantitative trading as a strategy? Yeah. Well, if, if you if you separate perhaps a bit between quantitative asset management, so you take the decision process where we have a model and say, okay, I have an asset allocation, I, I make some kind of enhanced index fund, something like this. Then if you have a good methodology and you keep you, you keep continue, you continue to use it, you probably will make it to, to create some up. That, that is a good uh, point for quantitative approaches, that you have a consistent alpha that you can get back to the investor. On the other hand, if you look on quantitative uh, trading, really the trading part, then it is uh, very common that you go into something like high frequency trading and really making money in trading. In trading the market and getting right in and out of the market and getting out of the trading. But these are really two separated ones. So one is more on the allocation side or on the selection side of what you really put in the portfolio. And then you have the execution. And uh, yeah, it's the really different teams that you need. You really have other uh, needs for personal things quite simply to this, this, this task. So we, we use mainly PhD people from physics, mathematics, statistics for creating models, how to invest in the market, and, uh, what kind of uh, assets to buy and so on. And we use more computer science people for, for making the trading uh, good and implement trading strategies that can give us arbitrage. So it's, it's, you, you couldn't have one fund that is purely PhD quant fund, making allocation and the quant fund that is purely trading fund, high frequency fund, and uh, only computer science people. Right. So what do you think is uh, the future or so some of the kind of perspectives that you might have on the future for quantitative trading in Brazil? Yeah, I, I think that primarily we will have uh, more firms going into the quantitative trading, mm -hmm. automated trading, algorithmic trading part. Uh, and then we, have, we probably will have more alternatives for one funds that work on the asset allocation part. I think in, in, you will find a certain separation on that. And they will focus more on what they are, are better in. So what we saw, that a few funds really coming up from people from polytechnic schools being very good at implementation and all that stuff and they don't care so much about that but they implement very fast they have good trading ideas and they implement and make money with that and you have some some skilled people coming out from university with financial background with ideas of allocation and all that stuff and but for them it's not so easy that you easily set up a new fund so they normally enter into the bigger firms and start with the support group and then start to get this quantity to fund within the bigger method. Okay, great. Well, we're really looking forward to the presentation in Brazil. And um, we want to thank you so much for sitting down with us. We're getting ready to go to this evening's cocktail reception, so please excuse the bustle as people get ready to uh, leave for that. But really, thank you so much for sitting down. And uh, again, we look forward to Brazil. Okay, hope to see you there. All right, me too.